Let's go in game. Introduce some players. Let's enjoy some StarCraft, guys. Ascension to Aya. I, I, you know, I'm interested in every single Korean, well, you know, Zest and Innovation both dropped a map to Hellraiser. Let's see if you can do it again against the final Karini, please. Let's see if you could win. One upset that would be Rogue looking for his first map win of the day. To the top left-hand side, our Blue Zerg player, it's Rogue. To the bottom right, our Red Protoss player is Hellraiser. So you guys set up and get rolling. Game one. Ah, you know what? I feel like Hellraiser PvZ has been a matchup he's very good at, especially because, you know, to be a European player, you kind of have to be good at PvZ because there's just so many European Zergs. So, uh, it does feel as though Hellraiser might have a decent shot here. We'll see what he does. Real Rogue didn't look brilliant against Zest either, I have to say. It's not like Zest had to work super crazy hard to make it work. Uh, in the first game, he very simply, like, straight up with DTs, killed the third hatchery. There wasn't detection of, even though it was scouted. And then, of course, in the second game, Rogue went for that kind of... Uh, I mean, it was kind of like a big stalker timing from Zest. He just did enough against the Rogue Ravager force. Uh, the Lurkers were not quite up in time. Then the Lurkers held on for a while, but Zest was able to break on through as he continued to tech on up. As we, uh... Get ready to rumble. We're going to see Hatchgas pool opening here from Hellraiser. Holy shit. Guys. Can chat just chill? Just chill, guys. Twitch chat's going a little bit mental today. I know there's lots of us. Let's just enjoy StarCraft together. That's what we're trying to do. Couple queens on the way up, a few zerglings on the way out. As we're going to be seeing this Nexus dropping down the natural expansion as well. Very standard build order so far. I mean, it's just two minutes in. PvZ especially, nothing really goes super crazy early game. The kind of biggest difference you would probably see is something like, you know, the choice to go Nexus first or Gate Nexus or Double Gate sort of stuff. Those are the few different ways you can set up here. In the first couple of minutes, kind of change things up. But this was just Gate Nexus core against Hatch Gas Pool. Third hatchery coming down, so you know both players are working towards at least going in towards like a five minute ish game, you know, at the very least. You know, nothing is gonna end this game super quick or anything along those lines as we see the Twilight Council just dropping for Hellraiser. There's a Nematized Carapace from Rogue here. Again, his second series of the day, he went 0 2 against Zest earlier. He will play now against Hellraiser, and then our final matchup of the day is Zest uh, sorry, Rogue against Innovation to wrap things up. What a match that's gonna be. Should be pretty darn awesome. I'm really looking forward to it. I, it's going to be my favorite match. I don't think I've ever casted... I don't, I don't actually think I've ever really casted Rogue before. I think maybe I casted him in like the... Like a Kung Fu event or Master's Coliseum one day when I had to fill in for someone. But I don't think I've ever... He's definitely never played in my events, you know. And yeah, Maybe I casted him back way back when in like a Leifeng Cup like last year. Before he became the absolute monster that he is this year. I'm not too sure. Is this Drove Lord? Oh man, he's going to come in and scout well. Gonna try to scout. He actually turns around though. Look at all these gates coming from Hellraiser. Well, he turns around because the other Overlord is coming in, moving in towards the main. Told me asking who is uh, Hellraiser. Hellraiser is a Ukrainian Protoss player. He's fairly high up on the UK on the European ladder. You know, he's GM. He is the sort of player who will, you know, he's won a Corsair Cup. He wins gold for SE2s. You know, he can take maps off the very best. He can beat the players in Europe, such as Snoot. He can beat Nurture. He can take maps off them, guys. He's not, you know, he's not a 7k MMR monster. He doesn't play and beat these guys every day, but he can beat them. And so it's not like this is some random guy who just picked off the ladder and said, You! He did come through a qualifier to qualify for this event. As we do see, four Zellers just lifting him to this warp prism. Just gonna see the Overlord here again poked away by this Stalker, so... Oh, I raised a little bit of a mistake there, actually. But as you can see, a lot of gateways. Hellraiser is very well set on what he wants to get going for himself here. There's a lot of gates coming up and get ready to go. Feeling's going to drop in towards the main in the next few moments. Not going to try and do something, but actually a lot more Zelda's warping into the left-hand side while some Banes are just finishing up. Triple Spine Crawl on the way. Looks as though 
There is kind of a realization here from Rogue as to what he's playing against. As Zealot's gonna have to start splitting against the Banes. They're doing a pretty good job of it, honestly, so far. The Banes aren't really finding great connections. Oh, now they stack back up again a little bit. Now, the Banes do help out a lot, but there is going to be a few Zealots saved, and there is still going to be another Warbin of Zealots. And the next set of Banes only just start. I mean, this could very well be a very dead third hatchery in the next few moments. I mean, Zealots are going to start moving forwards once more. Rogue, well, he might actually lose a couple of Banes before they're ready to go. Oh, that first Zealot takes a big hit. Now he starts has to start splitting away again just a little bit here. Queens transfusing each other. A couple more Banes going to finish up in the back. Where's the next Warpin? He really needs it ASAP. It looks the rogue is still just about holding on. It's the Ling drop at home at the same time, killing 10 probes. Actually stops Hellraiser from having as many Zealots warping in as he might usually expect to have at this stage of his attack. If Rogue didn't have that kind of counter Ling drop, then yeah, Hellraiser gets so many more... Uh, no, he just has so many more Zards for the next warping, and maybe he does break through here. Queens have a transfuse to save this hatchery with, as actually the Zards stop targeting the hatchery, goes back onto it, there's the transfusions, and Rogue will keep it alive, and as the hatchery survives, Hellraiser realizes it's just... Let's do this. To the top, right-hand side of the map. Our Red Zerg, give it up, guys, if you're cheering on for Jinnah Greenwings. It's Rogue. Bottom left, our blue Protoss. It is Hellraiser. You know, honestly, in 2018, I think he's a name to watch out for. He's been on the up for a couple of years now. Really feels as though he's at that point where 2018, he might just have that breakthrough. He might just win that series that qualifies him for something big. And uh, maybe gets his chance to play at a bit more of an offline stage. It's difficult for Hellraiser. He's not a player who gets a lot of chances to travel to events, etc. And I believe he's still quite young as well. I think he's still in school, or he just finished school fairly recently. Uh, I'm not 100% certain, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a difficult one for him. Not being able to go to kind of WCS events as often as he might like to, etc. Uh, really one to look out for in 2018, I feel. This probe is uh, being across the map. Just wanted to check what the build was and seeing the hatchery first, he's completely content with that. Moves back home immediately. I uh, didn't even get the chance to uh, block an early scout because he went Nexus first, just and that's why he's scouting as well. Just wants to make sure he's not going to die here to the, uh, you know, to kind of like an early pool or something. It's something Rogue definitely will throw out there every now and then. So this time, just the Nexus first. And that's where things can change up. We mentioned it last game, you know, if you want to change up in the PvZ early, well, you throw down a Nexus first instead of a Gate Nexus. Let's see what the follow-up is here. Is there a second Gate for Hellraiser? Is there just going to be a Cyber Nexus call? Let's see what he wants to do. I love the Nexus versus the 2 Gate, personally. I really think it's a very powerful build. You know, you have first, you know... You essentially have it so it's... Well, how does it work? It's like... You essentially go into the 2 Gates, and so you have double Adept. So first off, you have all of the economy from a Nexus first. And then you have the two Adepts moving across the map, which forces units of the Zerg, and so already they're falling even further behind in the work count. Chronic Boost being spent on probes right now as Hellraiser establishes his early game economy. Overlord of Rogue. Moving in towards the frontier. He's just going to be having a little bit of a look to see what is there, and again, by the timings, Rogue will of course know that this is a Nexus first. Which is good to know, um, especially if he's going to go for this. I mean, Evolution Chamber dropping down. He's actually continued to make Zerglings here. Rogue is going for the Link Flood. He wants to flood. He wants to hit hard, fast. He wants to deal damage. So here we go. The third hatch will act as nothing else other than just a lava farm. No queen even on the map just yet. The first one about to pop on the natural. So here we go. First drop of Lord coming in. We're going to be seen at the front here as well. Rogue is, uh, well, Hellraiser is not fully walled off yet, which obviously creates some potential awkward moments. It's going to be the Robo as part of, uh, sorry, another gateway as part of the world. What is the Robo? The Robo is actually in the main base, though. No shield batteries just yet, and that's something which would go a long way to helping Hellraiser hold this off. As the first drop of Lord is still just getting set to find a position in, but actually the Stalker there stopping it from moving forwards just yet. Warp gate only halfway done. 38 probes as these zealots, oh, these zealots run in. I mean, already find this around on the zealot here at the front. That zealot is going to drop very quickly, as you see. Builds a shield battery now. 
Uh, Hellraiser just doesn't feel as though he's going to be able to fight this at all. The fact that he wasn't even able to hold the wall for a while means he couldn't wall off behind the Zealot. He couldn't buy any time at all. Hellraiser will drop 0-2.